Welcome to Sacred Journey. So glad you've joined us for worship today. Today we're going to look at the story of Noah. As we center our hearts and minds and prepare ourselves to worship together, we think about all the rain that comes down sometimes, those black clouds that come into our lives, and we remember Noah. And we remember how God came to Noah in a close encounter in the promise of the rainbow. Today, we are so fortunate to have Twin Cities District Superintendent Dan Johnson. He will be our storyteller today. He's a great storyteller, and I know you're going to be inspired, comforted, challenged. You'll be changed, and so will I. So let us center ourselves now and begin our worship together. Welcome. This is a poem called Nikki Rosa by Nikki Giovanni. Childhood remembrances are always a drag if you're black. You always remember things like living in woodlawn with no inside toilet. And if you become famous or something, you never talk about how happy you were to have your mother to yourself and how good the water felt when you got your bath from one of those big tubs that folk in Chicago barbecue in. And sometimes when you talk about home, it never gets across how much you understood their feelings as the whole family attended meetings about Holly Damp. And even though you remember, your biographers never understand your father's pain as he sells his stock and another dream goes. And though you're poor, it isn't poverty that concerns you. And though they fought a lot, it isn't your father's drinking that makes any difference, but only that everyone is together and you and your sister have happy birthdays and very good Christmases. And I really hope no white person ever has cause to write about me because they never understand that black love is black wealth. And they'll probably talk about my hard childhood and never understand that all the while, I was happy.
There is heartbreak in the letting go, turning our face from the place of our birth, but not wanting to forsake life in the land of Eden for a land stained with blood, haunted by the cries of a field where we've done violence to one another. We've wandered so far from that country of origin marking ourselves with this burden, yet protected and provided, repeating in mantra, even though I walk through the deepest, darkest valley, I fear no evil. When we can't look any deeper, when there is none who can peer into those inner parts where we dare not look, our hearts are anointed and preserved to not be of want, to eat from the fruit of light and not from darkness, to walk on paths of righteousness again. I've brought sacrifices to the altar, holding on to the very thing I was there to give up, clutching even to pain. Sometimes that's all you have to hold on to. And giving up of your image is just something too great to ask. Keeping your feet stuck in the ground, preventing you from moving forward. Right when I thought I had vision, and I was claiming to see, my blindness just completely returned another taste of the fruit of good and evil. This veil of darkness that just fell over me. But there is an invitation to receive vision again. Blind eyes made open in the dirt, in the mud. The pools of Siloam that wash over us allowing us to move forward from the ashes of the altar to the place of our promise. And we look in these waters and see ourselves for the very first time, learning our faces in the reflection as though we were remade in another's image. When we run away, goodness and mercy pursue us with tenacious love, the kind that travels distant lands to meet us right here in this place that we're at, putting together the pieces of our life to make us one again. Please join me in prayer to the Lord our God today. God of covenant and cosmos, you have woven an intricate tapestry called life and called it good. Yet creation groans today, waiting for humanity to reject consumption that harms the planet and embrace care that heals. So give us wisdom to appreciate what we did not create. Open our hearts to feel the intimate relationship that you have with all creation and guide us with your spirit that we might not only be pilgrims on the earth, but pilgrims with the earth, journeying home to your heart. Amen. God of all our fear and sorrow, God who lives beyond our death. Hold us close through each tomorrow. Love as near as every breath. Love as near as every breath. A message today from the book of Genesis. God's promise to Noah. Then God spoke to Noah and his sons, 
I'm setting up my covenant with you, including your children who will come after you, along with everything alive around you. Birds, farm animals, wild animals that came out of the ship with you. I'm setting up my covenant with you that never again will everything living be destroyed by flood waters. No, never again will a flood destroy the earth. God continued, this is the sign of the covenant I am making between me and you and everything living around you and everyone living after you. I'm putting my rainbow in the clouds, a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. From now on, when I form a cloud over the earth and the rainbow appears in the cloud, I'll remember my covenant between me and you and everything living that never again will flood waters destroy all life. When the rainbow appears in the cloud, I will see it and remember the eternal covenant between God and everything living, every last living creature on earth. And God said, this is the sign of the covenant that I set up between me and everything living on earth. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. <laughs>
Church. I'm Dan Johnson, Superintendent of the Twin Cities District. I bring you greetings from Bishop David Bard and thank you for your connection with the 60 other United Methodist congregations of the Twin Cities District and about 360 other United Methodist congregations all across the state of Minnesota. On this first Sunday in Lent, we begin a series entitled Close Encounters with God. I trust that this season of repentance and renewal will be truly meaningful as you reflect on the variety of ways you encounter the God of creation, the Christ of redemption, and the spirit of transformation on the road to Easter. Today, we turn to the beginning of the Bible's historical narrative, the story of Noah and his motley crew of creatures and clan building and boarding an ark to survive a great flood. The children's song in the service today is a fun, G-rated way to teach the Bible story, including the chorus, Noah knew God, Noah loved God, Noah was God's friend. It reminds me of another Noah's Ark chorus, <laughs> ending with the phrase, Everything was fine and dandy, dandy children of the Lord. <laughs> fine and dandy. Except for the R-rated account of all the corpses of people and animals floating off to decay. The common lectionary prefers to skip the gruesome realities of the flood. Nowhere in the three cycles of annual scripture lessons do we publicly read Genesis 6, verses 6 and 7. The Lord regretted making human beings on the earth and was heartbroken. So the Lord said, I will wipe off of the land the human race that I've created, from human beings to livestock, to the crawling things, to the birds in the skies, because I regret I ever made them. <laughs> and then after the floodwaters rose for 40 days, we also often refrain from reading Genesis 7.23. God wiped away every living thing that was on the fertile land, from human beings to livestock to crawling things to birds in the sky. They were wiped off the earth. Only Noah and those with him in the ark were left. It feels like a cover-up, like we'd prefer to ignore the hard parts of Scripture. We'd like to get God off the hook for the first part of the Noah story. Some archaeologists say the flood had minimal impact, that it was local and not global. Some anthropologists claim the story was copied from other cultures' creation myths. Others move quickly past the death and destruction to focus more on the joyful repopulating of the earth. But no matter how we might spin it, the flood is in the Bible. Our founder of the Methodist movement, John Wesley, also struggled with this story. Ultimately, he came down to this interpretation, that through the flood, God shows what God could do in wrath, destroy. God shows what God can do in mercy, save. And God shows what God will do in truth, covenant. 
In fact, in the ten verses of our scripture passage for today, from Genesis chapter 9, the word covenant appears seven times. Seven times! Rehearsing the promise to never again wield wrath and destroy. Seven times! Rehearsing the promise to again and always offer mercy and save. Seven times rehearsing the promise to act truthfully and purposefully for mutual care of people and planet. The sign of this everlasting covenant is revealed in our scripture for today. The translation of the Hebrew word in Genesis chapter 9 verse 13 isn't actually rainbow, it's literally just bow, as in bow and arrow. Yes, there was terrible destruction on the earth. From the perspective of the ancients, God had taken a deadly aim and exterminated every living thing from, apart from what was in the ark. But, but now in Genesis, the new understanding of God is that the bow set in the clouds is actually pointing in the opposite direction. It's bowed away from the earth. God's covenant is not to be a judgmental weapon to threaten the world. The bow in the clouds is also a beautiful spiritual image. Rainbows appear after storms, as the light from the sun hits the water droplets in the air and breaks into a consistent spectrum of colors. A mist may still be falling, but we know when we see the rainbow that no matter how fierce the storm may have been, it's over. We rest in this consistent assurance that the storms of our life will wane, both literally and figuratively. Last summer, during the third week of July, I took three of my grandchildren for their very first canoe trip to the Boundary Waters Canoe Area Wilderness with my daughter and son-in-law. We enjoyed a fairly leisurely five days and four nights paddling and portaging through Sawbill, smoke and burnt lakes. I've taken dozens of such trips through the years, but it's, <laughs> it's always a thrill for me to go with first-timers. Eyes and ears are wide open to the glory of God's creation. Hearts and minds are uncluttered by the trappings of daily life. It was a great first trip, and my grandkids were exposed in short time periods to a full range of summer weather chilly and hot, sunshine and rain, wind and calm, bright and dark. We witnessed the fullness of a rainbow unblocked by cityscape after a, of rain and marveled at the vastness of the night sky without any light pollution. The kids were thrilled to see their first shooting stars as the August Perseid meteor shower was just getting going. I taught them how to find the Big Dipper and how the, the two outer stars point to the North Star at the end of the handle of the Little Dipper. We talked about how the North Star remains fixed in the northern sky, and how all the other constellations rotate around it, making it a, a long-standing guide for navigation, and for some birds, migration. It was a memorable BWCA trip. I know not many granddads ever get such an opportunity. But I also mourn that it was the first and last trip with my dear granddaughter, Lauren, who died unexpectedly just six weeks later at the age of 13. At 10 months old, Lauren was diagnosed with epilepsy. For most of her life, it was well managed with medication and didn't affect her, her, her life much at all. Um, she, it didn't affect her development, um, education, other life activities, but the seizures did increase in frequency and in severity in the past year. She died unexpectedly in her own bedroom in the early morning hours of August 25th. It was 
It was a flood of trauma for Lauren's family who found her in the morning. And it's been a flood of grief for all of us who knew and loved her. At times like these, a rainbow becomes our North Star. Noah's rainbow promises that God does not wield such painful trauma. God's rainbow promises that God's mercy holds us in eternal embrace in this life and in the next. God's rainbow promises that God is always seeking truth and purpose for our lives, whether that's 13 years or 113 years. This rainbow, this covenant, does not just appear after the storm. This rainbow becomes our North Star that shines in the midst of the storm. This rainbow becomes our North Star that enables us to navigate through the storm. This rainbow becomes our North Star that offers direction beyond the storm. In Genesis chapter 8, verse 5, we read that after 10 months, the floodwaters began to subside from the mountain peaks. Noah's clan and creatures then <laughs> stayed cooped up on the ark for another month for the earth to dry before he opened the windows. And another three months after that, before it was safe to open the doors and start venturing outside. Hmm. I wonder what it would feel like to be caught in a 14-month quarantine like Noah and the creatures and clan on the ark. <laughs> yeah, we, we know all, right? We find ourselves in the midst of stormy days. And when the floodwaters rise, may we claim the rainbow as our North Star. This week, I, I've been facilitating listening posts in one of our United Methodist churches in the state. They asked me to help address some internal congregational conflict. I listened to more than 90 people in small groups over three days on Zoom. In every session, I heard a repeated and underlying theme of grief personal losses of loved ones, economic security threatened, isolation, limited outlets for rhythms of exercise and entertainment, social uprising related to racism and political division, children and youth almost despondent about being stripped of formative engagement in their lives like like school and, and sports and music and friends and work and activities. And all of this, all this spills over into their interactions with and their expectations of their faith community. Hennepin Church, you are a phenomenal community of faith. L like many churches, the past year has rocked your boat in some challenging ways. You miss the resonance of the organ in your great sanctuary and the inspiration of the art gallery. Y you long to sing and make music together. You lament the inability to dance at wedding receptions and, and cry at funerals. You wish Zoom gatherings could bring you closer than just virtual hugs, that, that administrative meetings could connect hearts and hands in addition to minds, that children and youth gatherings could, could be more than another hour on the screen. But friends, the ark is coming to rest. The floodwaters are subsiding. Any storm we can weather if we stay in the ark together. Any hope we can know 
through the promise of God's rainbow. Any dreams will go far with hearts and minds fixed on faith's north star. Physics provides an interesting scientific explanation of the rainbow phenomenon. A rainbow appears in the sky opposite the sun, uh, with, with water particles bending light around the sun's common center. The top of the rainbow arc is always about 40 degrees above the horizon. From, from a cosmic perspective, the, the rainbow is actually a full circle. The reason that we don't see the full circle of spectral color is because the Earth itself gets in the way and, and cuts the circle, cuts that rainbow in half. Like the rainbow, perhaps the reason we don't see the full circle of God's love and guidance in our lives is because we let things of this earth get in the way. Like the rainbow, may the coming 40 days of Lent keep us attentive to the close encounters with God that are always placed before us. George Matheson was a famous Scottish scholar and hymn writer. He had a hard life in many ways. He sometimes found himself alone and isolated, in part because he was almost completely blind by the time he was 20 years old. But in the midst of his varied trials, his faith was both a rainbow promise and a North Star guide. One of his hymns, number 480 in our United Methodist hymnal, is O Love That Will Not Let Us Go. May the third verse of that hymn be a closing prayer for our meditation today. O joy that seekest me through pain, I cannot close my heart to thee. I trace the rainbow through the rain and feel the promise is not vain that morn shall tearless be. Amen and amen. Thank you, Dan. It's wonderful to remember the promises of God. And now let us share the peace with one another, with those who you are worshiping with this morning, or with those that you are thinking about. Text them now or email them so that you may share the peace of Christ with one another. The peace of God be with you and also with you. It is good to pray for one another. There are those who have asked for your prayers, and they are listed in the chat now. And they're also in the bulletin that you can download from our website. Let us begin our time of prayer in silence as we open up our hearts to God, so God may fill us with hope. Let us pray.
Please join me in prayer as we begin the season of Lent. God of the journey, we have come to you as we are, with a history of rights and wrongs, a past of shaky discipleship, the mixture of what we know life to be. We would cling to the comfortable and hold on to the past, however painful. It is our security. You call us to move, to grow, to reflect, and change, to encounter the intimate presence that is the reality of your love. So we lay down what we no longer need in order to have you and you alone. As we walk, please be our way. As we learn, be our truth. And as we grow, be our life. Amen. We invite you to celebrate with us now. God grant you many years. great that we can do life together? Isn't it great that we don't have to do life alone? Have you tried Close Encounters Link through Lent? Every day during Lent, small groups are meeting for 45 minutes for connection, conversation, inspiration, and encouragement. The groups meet at different times each day, so check out our website for the full details in the Zoom links. This is our final week to complete our congregational survey, The Road to Reopening. We're not ready to reopen to in-person worship yet, but we're making plans for the future, so we need your input. So please fill out that survey and turn it in by February 28th. If you haven't got the links, they're on Hennepin Happenings. If you don't use email, a paper copy has been mailed to your home, but be sure to send it in to us by February 28th. Next Sunday, Bishop David Bard, Interim Bishop of the Minnesota Annual Conference of the United Methodist Church, will be our guest preacher in both worship services. He's going to be great. I've known Bishop Bard for so many years. He's funny, he's inspiring, and I know you're going to be touched. So make sure you mark it on your calendar and invite your friends. Help us trace your rainbow colors Through these days of change and choice Holding firmly to your promise All the world can praise, rejoice In a world of contradiction
was good to worship with you today at Sacred Journey. Now as you go your way, know that you are loved deeply by God, who is a God of promises, a God who keeps promises. And so each and every day, look for those rainbows as we bless one another and as God blesses us. Amen, all women, all children, all animals, all creation. Ah. Thank you.